Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. Well, I'm sure many of you watching this are diehard carburetor. There's definitely something to be said for the benefits of electronic fuel injection. There's a reason Ford's been using it since 1986. Many of the reasons being drivability and cold start. Now, while you may enjoy messing with the jets on your carburetor, there's something to be said for getting in, turning the key, and driving down the street. If you have a classic Mustang, there's actually many ways to convert to fuel injection. One of the hottest systems right now is the EFI system from Holly. Today, I have Rick in our studio from Holly. He's going to tell us about this system and tell us what you need to convert your classic Mustang to EFI. Rick, thanks for coming out. Thank you very much. Tell us about this system. What do we have here? We've got the new Terminator kit. Okay, the Terminator kit is a TBI system. Works very, very easy for a guy replacing his carburetor. Uh, basically, you're going to bolt this carburetor on. You've got one plug in here. You have a plug into the to the uh, temp sensor, okay. okay, and then you have a wide band that you're going to put in the exhaust, and then you have to have a place to put your ECU. The ECU uh, is weatherproof, so you can put it in the engine compartment if you okay. wish to. So it really is a nice system. So direct replacement for the carburetor, just unbolt your factory carb. This will fit any manifold, high rise, any style manifold out there. It bolts under 4150 flange, so anything that a Holley carburetor fit onto, this will fit onto. Okay, and you said this can be mounted under the hood, inside the car, doesn't matter. Any place you can put it as long as it's safe and protected to Correct. a point. Correct. Okay, and how do you program it? How do you make it work? Give me some more details Very about how it functions. Very easy to work with. Comes with this little keypad right here. When you get everything wired up in the car and you turn the key on, it's going to come up and ask you questions, okay? Okay. It's going to ask you questions like what type of cubic inch you have, what type of camshaft you have, what type of ignition control you have, and then it's going to make the program for you. So this isn't a system you have to install and take it to a local tuner and throw it on the dyno, no. nothing like that. You can do everything in your house by simply plug and play. Correct. And what it's going to do is after you get it on the car, you're going to warm it up get an operating temperature and go take it for a drive and you can feel it change as you're going. It's going to target the air fuel reading off the wideband O2 sensor. It's going okay. to target that air fuel that it's looking for and tune your car for that application. Now do you have to choose the air fuel that it's using or does it automatically pick the best one for your application? It pass, when, you're, when, you, when you're answering those questions, okay, it's going to basically do a calculation and do the best application for yours, okay? Okay. Now, you do have some adjustability in that, but most people never even go in and change them. Okay, and with this system here, obviously, there's a lot of different Mustang engines the classics came with. It'll work with any of them, small block, big block, no, Cor no corrections correct. there, no limits. This will handle anything up from down to as, probably as small as 150 horses okay. all the way up to 600 horses. Okay, so this is good to 600. So if you have a basic, say you put it on your 289 and next year you build a 302 or 351, this system can go with you and you're good to go. No changes Correct. necessary. Sure will. Okay, now to install this, obviously we have the throttle body, the computer, the wiring. What else is necessary to put this on your classic Mustang? Well, you've got everything comes in the one kit, okay, except for fuel system. Okay. And we have quite a few different fuel systems that, to choose from or a guy, if he's already got a fuel pump that's got a pump in it, okay, okay. you can use that also. But we've chose our kit that we have over here. This does come with everything that you need except for a return line. That is something that you have to to purchase separately or okay. they're designed separately. So obviously it is a return style system. Correct. This system's gonna give you your fittings, your pump, your filters, main feed line, just add a return and you're ready to go. Correct. Okay, and there's obviously several ways you can do a return on a classic Mustang. There are ways to do it with a factory tank as well, which we're gonna show you during the installation. Um, so basically we have everything we need, add the return line, ready to do an installation. Correct. All right, let's get started. Okay. All right, before we get started, tell us the basics of what we're going to be doing to install the Holley EFI onto our 70 Mach 1. Well, to start with, we're going to take the shaker off from the air cleaner. Okay. Then we'll replace it with our TBI unit, the Terminator. Okay. okay. Then what we want to do is find a good place to put the ECU, depending on the engine compartment or the interior, okay? Then we're going to run our wiring system, okay? Make sure it's done correctly as the instruction says. And then we're going to have our O2 in the exhaust and our water temp sensor in the intake manifold. Yep. Okay, we're going to show our viewers the basics of how to install the system. We're obviously not going to go into heavy detail on every nut and bolt, but what would you say is an average estimated time to install this at home in your garage on your classic Mustang? It depends on how nice they want to do the wiring. I okay. give myself at least six to eight hours, okay? You can spend more time on that if you want to hide the wiring and make the wiring look really nice or put it away where you can't see it, okay? Okay, but so this is something somebody could do over a weekend in their garage without any problem. Sure can. Park it carbureted on Friday, drive to work Monday with fuel injection. Sure can. Okay, let's get started. Okay. All right, so you said we're going to start by removing the carburetor shaker and all the factory fuel parts, correct? Come up there.
All right, so the carburetor is off. We're ready for the TBI then? Yep. Okay, let's use the original hardware and bolt that down. Yep. Are there any modifications necessary to the factory throttle cable with this system? Install this, basically, so we can hook up our exact same setup. Okay. Okay, once that's bolted on, then what's the next step? Basically, what we're looking at now is, what I usually choose is where to put the ECU. Okay. Now, Rick, you had said it's okay to mount this controller inside, outside, it doesn't matter where it goes. Correct. It's safe inside. So we decided yep. to mount ours on our radiator support in front of our battery. A couple reasons there. One, it has to get 12 volts in the battery. It's a nice short run there. Two, it actually hides it nicely up front under the hood. Once the battery's back in place, you won't see the controller at all. All the wires will drop down underneath the battery tray and make it a nice clean installation. All right, so we have our throttle body on, we've got our computer wired up, well mounted, what's the next step? Next step is what you want to make sure these two main power wires that come off the ECU go straight to the battery terminals. That's very important. You don't want them to go anyplace else, they need to go in Not the, the seller, no starter solenoid, nothing under the hood, nope. direct to 12 volt battery on. Direct to 12 volt battery. Okay. Then your red and white is your key on switch, okay. Then you also have a green that goes to your fuel pump. Then you've got a black, of course, the ground, and then another red for power. And that okay. black and red, are they switched or constant as well? Okay, the, the red on here can be constant. Okay. okay. But it also can be switched, either way. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, as long as the red and white goes to switch. Correct. Okay, and the yellow? The yellow wire is for a different application of distributors. We're not gonna be able to, we're not, we will not use them in this application. You'll need 12 volt switched inside the interior, basically to trigger the system to turn it on. You want to make sure you're using a 12 volt switch that does have power when the car is cranking or it won't work properly. All right, so the wiring's done up top. We dropped the green wire down. This is going to go to our fuel pump. This is not a trigger. You can actually run the fuel pump directly off this wire. Correct. The fuel pump that's in this is under basically 15 amps. Okay. So that'll take care of it. If you do anything over 15 amps for a fuel pump, you want to put a relay on it. Okay, and I know the kit comes with a wide band. Where do we want to put that on this car? Wide band's going to go into the header. Uh, you can either, I recommend the best is put it right in the collector. Okay. That okay, works the nicest way to do, and that works really Driver's smooth. side, passenger, doesn't matter, whichever one's easier. It doesn't really that make a difference. Uh, it's designed to go on the on the driver's side, but it doesn't have to. Okay, and let's go show me what we're going to do with the tank back. Okay. Now, what are you going to do at the tank with your new pump and your new lines? How's everything going to work back here? You're going to need to run a return line back, and we use a bulkhead to go to that. So we'll just drill a hole up here so we can slide this through and hold it in place. And okay, it's a hole somewhere in here yep. on the tank yep. for the return line. Sure would be. Okay. And then we also, when we want the pump, we want the pump really as low as you can get. We want it protected, of course, but mm. you want as low as you can get so it's gravity fed as much as it can And be. that can come right off your factory pickup. Correct, here. sure can. Okay, so the stock sending unit will work fine, no problems there. Yep. As far as it knows everything's staying in there, we're just adding the pump in line. Correct. Okay. Once we have the pump mounted in the back and the lines fish to the front, we have to mount the regulator. You want to mount the regulator over towards the apron, somewhere towards the shock tower area. You don't want it on the firewall and you don't want to mount the engine itself. Basically, the fuel line is going to go to your throttle body, out of that, into the regulator, and that's where your return line comes off of. We mounted the bracket just underneath our shock tower on the apron on the back side of the passenger. All right, Rick, we have the return style fuel system installed. We got everything plugged in, connected. What's next? How do we get this thing running? Next, to turn the key on and we'll program it. Okay. 
All right, so it lit up, which is always a good sign. What do we do from here? Go down to wizard. Click, click on that? Click on that. Okay. Start wizard. Calibration, yes. Uh, we've got the Terminator. Click okay. on that. That should be the correct part number. Click on that. Uh, I'd say this is under 400. So 351, yeah. Yep, click on that. And we've got to figure out what type of camshaft we've got. Okay, so bar can be in 230, you said street strips, is that it? Correct. Okay. EC uh, control timing. In our case, it would be no because of the MSD, correct? Correct. All right. We've got a CD box, so you go down one. Okay. Push Pretty the simple. Button, that loads it up. Load this file, yes? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now it's, turned, it's primed our pump. I hear everything happening up here, so everything's turning on like it's supposed to? Correct. Just press button again? Yes. Okay, now we need to do TPS auto set. Okay. Ignition is on, engine's not started, so just hit start. Correct. We're going to put the gas pedal on the floor twice. Okay. I'll let you jump in there and handle that for me. Click on it. Okay. All right, now we're back to the start wizard. Okay. Okay. Ready to go? It's fired up. <laughs> Is it really that easy? Huh? It's really that easy. Yeah. One thing a lot of people forget, you got to turn the key off. Turn back on. Okay, okay so make you... sure you turn the key off and then back on to yes. start it. You ready? Yeah, start it up. All right, Rick, so the cold start was great. This car before the carburetor, you'd start it up, you'd have to floor it a couple times, stay on the gas, keep it running. That time, key on, start it right up. What's the process for learning now with the drivability on the car? What you want to do is next time he starts it up, he needs to get an operating temperature 160 degrees. Okay. And they start learning at 160. Okay. okay. Then go take it for a drive. And, and you want to drive it in all different types of load ranges. Well, I mean, drive it around town, drive it on the highway, you know, any different types of load that you're going to do. And really, about 50 miles, you feel it's just about done. Okay. okay. You can feel a big difference. And then 100 miles, it's pretty much finished, but you're not going to feel much difference between 50 and 100 miles. Okay, so once it does that, it's learned at yep. that point, you're pretty much ready to go with yep, it? Yep, sure are. Okay, the installation's pretty straightforward. It will take some time. It's not a one-day job. Figure a good weekend. You'll be back on the road in no time.